Hey guys, it's Coach again, and uh, I got a question the other day uh, with all the different add-ons and accessories available for your AR-15. Uh, they're wondering where do you start. So I got to thinking about it, and where do I start? Training. Find yourself a beginner class that's going to teach you operation. So how the thing operates, how to load it, how to unload it, and make it safe. Maintenance, how to clean it and oil it and make sure it, I mean, it's a machine like anything else. Uh, you need to give it this basic maintenance in order to keep it working, right? And then safety. Safety should be number one, you know, in any course that you take, all right? Now, in that course, you also need to learn the seven fundamentals of marksmanship. And we're not going to go into those right now, but that'll be part of the course. But not just from the bench. As you go to your local range, they got these cool little benches with the cutout and you can sit behind there and you just get real comfortable. Well, let me tell you, nothing in the real world looks like that bench, right? So you need to learn to shoot from standing, from sitting and kneeling, and from the prone, right? With nothing else, just unsupported and shooting from that, uh, those positions. The next thing you need is gonna be ammo. Buy yourself a fair amount of ammunition. Uh, just regular old ball, no problem, but it has to be something of decent quality. Uh, 55 grain, whatever, you know, you pick it, there's a bunch of stuff out there. But you're going to take that ammo, and another thing you might have to budget for is if you have a range that charges, then you're going to have to budget that money for that as well. All right? But the reason that you want to do this is you want to get out and train. Whatever you learned at that course, you're now going to have to get into and get some reps in so that you can meet the standard. What's the standard? Well, the standard that I'm gonna give you is just basic proficiency here. You need to be able to consistently hit a paper plate sized target from 25 yards from the prone, kneeling, or sitting and uh, standing positions. Once you can do that, I'd say you have basic proficiency. You also need to be able to, without thinking about it, load and make ready and clear and safe that weapon. Yeah, and safe handling goes without, without even saying, right? Once you've achieved that standard, then you're ready for your next step. The next level we're talking about is going to require a couple more purchases. So what you want to get in here some sort of red dot sight. It doesn't have to be an aim point or an EOTech. Um, this one's a Viridian. Um, SIG makes some good ones, primary arms, uh, and they're not all that expensive. Uh, you also want to get a weapon light. This one's a Surefire. They come in all different levels of uh, you know, expense and Gucci, right? And then the last thing is a sling. Right? So the reason that you want these things is if you're going to use this for home defense and that's you know you know self-defense is what we're looking for uh, as your basic proficiency and the red dot sight once you've used learned to use the uh, the iron sights red dot sights are even easier because in a high stress situation you're going to be focused on the threat and that's what red dot sights are made to do you look at the threat the red dot shows up put the red dot on the threat off safe squeeze the trigger bang all right the flashlight is there. Now you want a good flashlight, four or 500 lumens. Uh, and again, they're not that expensive either. And get something, a mount that you can mount it to your, uh, your rifle. There's a bunch of different ways to do that as well. Uh, but that is to positively ID your threat. So when you PID a threat, uh, you need to have that light in order to do it. I mean, it, it, during the day, at night, there's shadows, there's uh, dark rooms. You need to be able to light that up and make sure that uh, it's actually a threat because you don't want to shoot someone or something that you didn't have to, right? And then the last thing is a sling. And there's a bunch of different ways to do slings. Uh, this is just a simple sling. And the idea behind this is it's not to help you shoot. It's in that situation, once the, the shooting part of that situation is over, uh, if you don't have a sling, you got to put the gun down or hand it to somebody, right? With a sling, you can put it over your shoulder and then you still have the weapon with you. You have control over it and that's really important. The next course you want to take is some sort of combat marksmanship course. Right? They come in different names, carbine courses, look around, you know, you'll be able to find one. But what this course has to teach you is combat marksmanship fundamentals, how to stand, 
combat stance, how to present the gun. So you're not always gonna be pointing the gun at somebody. So you're gonna be going from a low ready, from a high ready, or from a patrol ready, right? Which is, there's different names for each one of those. Uh, but being able to present the gun from a ready position to extended gun, you know, fighting position, all right? It doesn't sound like much, but trust me, you wanna be able to do that smoothly, efficiently, and this has a safety, a manual safety on it, and you need to be able to work that safety, all right? And know when it's on and when it's off. The last thing that course should include is the use of cover. Because ideally, you don't wanna be standing out in the middle of the open, you know, getting shot at. If you can find cover just by stepping a few feet you know, or getting behind a car, behind a wall. There are techniques in how to fight from around that cover to give you uh, more survivability. So if you follow this program, it's gonna give you that good basic proficiency for you to use effectively an AR-15 for home or self-defense. This need was illustrated to me back when COVID happened because I got a lot of business. Uh, a lot of people came to me to be trained on the gun they just bought. So during that time, we all remember, you know, the gun stores shelves were empty of guns and ammo because everybody who didn't own a gun and wanted protection ran out and bought a gun, all right? Now, uh, there's a study out there that a guy showed me the other day and the majority of people who bought a gun, that first, those first time panic buyers, if they brought the gun home and had a friend that would teach them how to use it, or they took a class, like with me. Those people are not afraid of guns anymore. They are confident in their ability to defend themselves. The other group, the majority of them, if they didn't get any training, they sat there and you know brought the gun home, put it on their coffee table, what was a rifle or a pistol? Uh, they stared at it like it was a rattlesnake, probably sold it back. They're more afraid of guns and they're more likely to be at a gun. All right, that's not everybody, but the study said that they were more likely to, to shift that direction. I had people that came out, they jumped every time a gun was fired. They had uh, a lot of fear around the whole firearm issue. But in one day, once you remove that ignorance, you know, and give them a little bit of training, a little bit of knowledge on how to actually use the gun, they lost the fear in one day. Now, that's, that was good. That wasn't that basic proficiency that we're talking about. If they took that home and practiced with it, then they're much better off now. Once you achieve this basic proficiency, where do you want to go? There's so much in the world of AR-15s. You know, if you just want to keep it for home defense, fine. If you want to go hunting or do competitions, it's endless. All right. Now, that's going to require some more gear, maybe a, a low power variable optic, a miniature red dots, different kinds of slings. You're opening yourself up to all kinds of stuff. So uh, I'm not saying you have to go that way. I'm just saying once you get this basic proficiency, then decide where you want to go. So to recap, number one, find yourself a beginner course. Don't be afraid to be a beginner. Take that blow to your ego and just learn what you don't know about the gun. All right. Number two, buy ammo and practice with it. Number three, establish that standard. Okay. Once you've established that standard, then you get more training. Find yourself a more advanced course. It's going to teach you the next level. And finally, decide what you want to do with it. You know, what I like to do is build clones of, uh, I don't know, the rifle I invaded Iraq with. Now, this one's got a lot of stuff on it, but it, it was a made it for good capability. You don't need this. But if you want to build a clone of a, uh, you know, a cool military gun, well, you can do that too. You know, and then you can take it out and shoot it. There really is no end to this, right? So uh, whatever you can envision, uh, there's a, a way to modify your AR-15 that will uh, that'll cover you. All right, guys. Hey, and if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment. You know, tell me if I'm doing good or uh, if I'm all screwed up. Uh, and if you think we earned it, go ahead and visit a Patreon page. All the money that we earn from there is going to go back into the channel, and it's, uh, it's much appreciated. All right? And as always, remember, train hard and stay ready.